was from in the kitchen at one point to the way he built a building in the backyard to when he finally was able to go back to school and open his barber shop now. Um, like Jeffrey had mentioned, that's where he's at today. Um, another aspect of it was my grandfather, uh, my mom's father. He was very influential in a lot of my decisions as a teenager. Um, I used to watch the people around me end up in things that I didn't necessarily want to be a part of, but he was always somebody that was there to like, give me an alternative where I would say, well, I don't have money, I can't find a job. He would be like, well, get out there and throw them logs in the woods, do something, always be doing something to keep you know, money in the pocket. Um, even further than that, the inspiration to begin the entertainment company as well as the record label came from my freshman year in high school. I was planning on attending a, a talent show and one of my friends thought it would be very funny to sign me up for the talent show as a musical act. And as a freshman in high school, I had no knowledge of anything musical, anything artistic at all. I was an engineering student, so I had every intention on being a computer engineer and building a computer engineering and graphic firm. Um, 24 hours before that talent show, one of the office assistants comes and she's like, hey, we need you to be at practice tomorrow morning before we go to the um, go to the talent show tomorrow night. And I was like, I'm not in the talent show. I don't know what you're talking about. And they're like, well, your name's here, and we've already printed up um, the flyers and the form, so you have to perform. So I had to spend that whole morning at school, that afternoon, and those few hours before the performance to make a song, write a song, memorize a song. And I remember it was one of the most nerve-wracking things that I had experienced. Um, my mom, my dad, they had no idea when I told them that I was going to the talent show. They were just as shocked as I was. But I got there and the response from it was one that I didn't expect because it was something I was doing that I didn't know I could do. Um, after that, I'd say maybe a week or two, I really started to sit and think on it, and I decided that, that was the career that I wanted to go into. Rather than being a computer engineer, I wanted to become a recording engineer. I really enjoyed the process of recording the song and working with the software on the computer to bring it from the recording stage to what you hear on the radio. And it was inspiring as well as, you know, slightly detrimental, but I came home school that day, went into the living room where my parents were sitting there and I sat them down and I broke it down and I was like, I don't want to go to school for computer engineering anymore. And they were like, oh, you know, what do you want to do? You want to go into something else in the field? And I was like, I still want to be an engineer, but I want to be a recording engineer for music. And the first thing out of my mom's mouth <laughs> was, I'm not going to have no son running across no stage, hippity hopping and walking or anywhere. And my dad, he was like, well, you know, calm down. He didn't say he wanted to do that. He said he wanted to engineer. But realizing that there was nobody in the area to engineer, I began to make the songs myself just to showcase that I knew how to engineer the songs. And from that, it transitioned into people seeing me as the artist and not the engineer. So that following year, I ended up creating record label London Entertainment. It later transitioned into a full entertainment company over some legal issues, but initially it was a record label that was a non-profit. So I would help kids in my school, kids in the community, and if they needed a place to record, if they needed advice on how to record, I would provide them with a place and with the information they needed. Following that, I would go, I think it was four years until I graduated from Pender Early College, uh, in 2013 and Cape Fear Community College in 2013 with my Associates in Arts and on the day of my graduation I released my debut album. Uh, following that I ended up not getting accepted to college. I sort of put all of my eggs in one basket and I just knew I have a I have a guaranteed admission to this school. I don't have any reason to apply to another school. The school told me later 
I wasn't old enough to complete their program. I had to be 21 and I was 17 at the time. So the four years I would have to wait in order to go to that school, I could have went to another one. But instead, I decided to work. I decided to continue building the company and then later re-enroll in school. Uh, by the time I re-enrolled, I realized I had pretty much learned and taught myself everything that the school was planning on teaching me anyway. Uh, I stayed for a semester, spent like $5,000, and realized I just wasted $5,000. They're telling me stuff I already know. Uh, this past Christmas, I, Christmas, I celebrated the 10th anniversary of the company. Um, Christmas Day, that's when my parents brought me my first uh, computer, they brought me my first microphone, and all my recording equipment, and it's been a very long 10 years, uh, I'm only 23, so 10 years is not that long, but it's long to me. <laughs> um, right before that uh, day we got one of the release, we had a small house fire. My room got messed up, the laundry room got messed up, and pretty much every song I had made at that point was just wiped clean. My hard drive got messed up and all that. So I ended up spending every day from February to the beginning of April inside of McDonald's using their free internet, doing homework, making songs and stuff just because I felt I had to continue working. Just because I wasn't in my normal place didn't mean that the work was stop. Uh, as far as other struggles, I've had one one case of actual legal trouble, and it was a learning experience for me because, like I said, I didn't have anyone to teach me these things. It was just me on my own learning as I go. Um, I got the licensing to record a song featuring a young lady back in 2014, I think, and her record label didn't give her permission. She gave me permission, but they didn't give her permission. So I went up to check the album and see how it was doing. It was on iTunes and everything, and the next morning, everything was gone. And I got an email from the record label, the DMCA uh, of cease and desist order. And they said that any and all uh, funds that I had made from the song be relinquished to them. And I'm glad it was only up for one day because I only made $6. <laughs> um, the, the biggest trouble with that was it's 2019 and they still have not taken that six dollars yet. So I have been trying to give them the six dollars and they won't take it. It's like they're just kind of holding it over my head. So anytime I get a check, they're always like, oh well, take six dollars off of that. And I'm like, okay, you're finally gonna take it, and then it just sits there. I always have a six dollar balance from the um, iTunes and Spotify for whenever they decide to take it. Um, after those troubles, I ended up uh, rebranding a little bit and I moved to London Records instead of uh, London Entertainment and then later transitioning into 1033 Records based off of the address where I grew up and I started building all of this. And that was when I ran into my first, uh, my first need to send this cease and desist. Uh, the show Empire with like Terrence Howard to Roger Benson. I was listening to the album from that show and one of my songs was performed on there and no one sent me anything. They, they had, um, I forgot his real name, but they had him perform it and it was just a sped up version of my song and my mom even thought we were sitting in a doctor's office and she was like, oh, yeah, I've heard that one. And I was like, no, that's that's not me. That's them from that show you watch. She's like, oh, well, do you get a check? I was like, no. No, nobody, nobody sent me anything. Um, but as the company grew, you know, my thoughts on success began to differ. I stopped wanting material success. I wanted spiritual success. Um, it became something that made me feel good with what I was doing. Uh, I went from charging people $100 here, $200 here to just try and see what worked for them because the end goal was to help as many people as I could. Um, most recently, I have taken London Entertainment and reestablished re it as the parent company for my record label. And I, and me and my mom, we went together and we created another
another company. It's the Bell Jones Foundation in honor of her parents. It's a uh, educational foundation. So we specialize in uh, we have a scholarship going right now. Um, we have the educational side. I'm an uh, educator at South Topsail, so it really helps that I'm able to do my business as well as do it inside of the actual school system. Um, so that was a really big uh, benefit I saw. It was, it became less about me and more about what I can do for the children in the area and how I can help the parents with their kids. You know, it's if I can provide a place that is safer for them and it's something more beneficial for them than you know going in the streets and doing anything that helps uh, not only them but it helps me with knowing they're safer. Um, just growing up. There weren't a lot of older um, kids in the community or young adults in the community that really spent time with us. So I feel like if I can be that person to the younger generation and help them, then it's beneficial for us all. Um, as far as the total impact on the community, um, I feel that it's exceeded my community. And that's something I personally was not prepared for. Um, with the growing of the businesses, you have to expect that it grows beyond what you're able to comprehend. Because um, if you put it in God's hands, it tends to grow bigger than what you have prepared. Um, what I thought would stop at the borders of North Carolina, even the borders of you know South Carolina, Virginia, has expanded globally. So at this point, uh, I have artists in 63 countries. I have worked with uh, different record companies and different radio stations with publishing artists. Uh, I have one currently that's in Romania. We're working on finishing her album. I have another man that lives in the United Kingdom, and we're working on his. Uh, and just all around, uh, it's been much bigger than I ever could have. Um, the most impactful to me would have been a young man that I used to go to school with. He called me one day and he said, you know, I never really took the time to listen to any of the songs you had made or listen to any of the songs you helped make, but I just want to thank you because listening to you and listening to the positivity that you had and the faith that you had helped restore mine. And that was, that was a feeling that I couldn't described at the time. It, it made me feel good to see that someone I knew growing up that was drifting away was able to come back, not necessarily off of something I said, but something that was spoken through me. And with, um, with the schools and with all of those kids, uh, now we expanded even further. We have uh, book publishing now. Um, I wrote and published three books. Uh, they're from the Kieran series. It's a young, uh, young adult slash teen novel series uh, focuses on a young African American girl and a science fiction setting. So the kids really enjoy that. And when they realize that their teacher is the one that wrote the book or their teacher is the one that made the song, I see that spark in them where they're just like, oh, well, if you can do it, I can do it. Amen. And that, to me, is the best feeling. Um, going into work and being, you know, ambushed by kids and like, Mr. Cameron, I started writing a book and I'm like, good, where are we at? So what do you need help with? And they're like, well, we only have three pages. We don't think it'll be as good. No, it won't be as good, it'll be better. You can make a better book than me. All I did was give you the idea, now you can go and be better than me. And just, you know, seeing that and just seeing the, the parents, the way the parents feel when they see that change in their child, when the children see the change in themselves, it's just uh, an amazing feeling. And as far as words of encouragement, uh, the same one that's you know been on my mind since my mom told me and my grandparents shared it with her, it's your name will go farther than you ever go. Amen. And I have never stepped foot outside of the United States, but there is you know an impression of me in different countries. People already know me before I even know who they know. All based off of you know what they have seen me do, what they have heard that I've done, or what they have heard me say. And that's just a blessing in itself. 
Amen.